People, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? As I promised, I promised you guys tonight I'd give you guys a great interview that you guys was waiting for. This is going to be something that a lot of you have been requesting. The transport industry. People, we got Devin Lloyd coming in on this live tonight alongside Big Jamal. People from Atlanta, Georgia, people. We're going to be talking about the transport industry tonight. Let me get these two individuals in and uh, go from there. Uh, where? Let me see. Get cool. Live tonight, we got uh, two of the, the two of the well-known uh, trucking industry vets in the building with us tonight. A lot of you've been wanting to learn about the trucking industry. What's going on, Devin? How you doing? Can you hear me? Bobby, sir, I can hear you, brother. How you doing tonight? Right. What's going on? Man, life is good. Life is good. What's going on? Um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Appreciate you tuning in tonight, giving us some of your precious time. Uh, but is Jamal going to be on this live also? Yeah, he's trying to, uh, I think, come in right now. Samuel Kennedy, Perfect. what's going on? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. People, we got a we got a goat in the building when it comes to the transportation industry. We all know this is close to a trillion dollar industry. Transporting goods across the world is very, very profitable. A lot of us are under, trying to understand where do I start? Is this industry for me? We're, we have a guest tonight who's going to be able to give us the ins and outs about this industry. He drives trucks. He, he's an owner, an operator. He understands all the components of the trucking industry. Welcome, people. Tonight, Devin Lord. What's popping, baby? What's, What's going, going on, big dog? How you doing tonight, Bobby? What's good? What's up, Man, brother? It feels wonderful. It feels wonderful. Um, I know I know. you said Jamal is coming on, so once he's ready, we'll have him just jump right on in. Okay. Um, and now, a lot of people, we, we, we're we hearing it too much. Right now, the last two years, all you're hearing about, everybody wants to start the trucking industry. Everybody wants to buy their truck. L let me first ask, tell, you know, ask this question to you, okay? Mm -hmm. Why did Devin get into the trucking industry? Tell us a little bit about Devin. Actually, it wasn't my ideal. Actually, it was uh, Jamal Davis, my best friend. It was his idea. Okay. And, um, you know, we started trucking maybe about, I want to say about 20 years ago. Okay. And um, it was just wanting to be independent, Bobby. You know, um, wanted that freedom. Wanted that freedom. You know, I had been working for companies, you know, and it was just like, man, I can be doing this on my own. <laughs> making my own money. <laughs> I'm making somebody else rich. Why can't I do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, we jumped out there and we tried it. Now, granted, you know, like, you know me, it ain't always been good now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got go to go through the ups and downs of business. A lot of people, I try to make sure they're aware of that. Business is not always sweet. It, it ain't sweet. You got to your, it ain't sweet. It takes time to get to where you're at. And, and, then, and that's what a lot of people do, man. A lot of people will tell you, you know, how much money they make and they're doing this. Listen, there ain't no cap over here. You know, it was hard for me, you know, six years ago when I jumped in, well, when I, I started eight years ago, when I first started doing this, man, I took a loss. I took one of the worst losses that I've ever had in my life, man. I got in a bunch of debt. You know, um, I didn't really do my due diligence and actually, you know, studying my craft, studying the business. And um, I jumped out there, man, um, and fell on my face, man. You know, um, I tell people, you know, in this, in this game, it's not a matter of if, it's when. And what I mean by that is, you see what's going on now with fuel. It's not if fuel is going up, it's when fuel is going up. It's not if my truck breaks down, it's when my truck is going to break down. It's okay. not if the rates change, it's when the rates are going to change with brokers are paying. So you got to set yourself up and be in a position you know, to be ready Lord for when those hard times come, bro, because they come. Trust me, they well, come. Here, here's the main thing, right? A lot of people um, tell us. Uh, now, I know you're from Atlanta, Georgia, of course. Um, no, 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 uh, no. Your... I'm from Florida. No, I'm from Florida. from Florida. I'm originally from Florida. Yeah, I'm from okay. Avon Park, Florida. But uh, I've been in Atlanta for the last 25 years. I'm married, um, 44 years old, and I have two daughters. Uh, Beautiful wife, Antoinette Lloyd, two daughters, uh, <laughs> seven and nine. And, um, yeah, definitely, man. You know, I'm a big fo uh, sports fan. You guys, um, hey, some man. of you guys know me uh, from my uh, Talk Sports show. I have a podcast as well. Shout out to big, Utah, uh, man, big sports fan, man. Love sports. So check out my podcast sometimes, too, Utah Sports Show. But, yeah, man, I've been up in Atlanta for the last 25 years. Yeah. What, ma what made you transition anyway? Just curious. As far as coming to Atlanta? Yeah. Just been in uh, Florida my whole life, wanted to see something different. I'm from a small town, man. Avon Park, 
you know, it's, it's a small town. I uh, had been in Florida my whole life and uh, just wanted to do something different. Now, I know you say you got into the truck industry. There were some ups and downs, especially those some downs. Uh, what, what's some things you could tell people that, <laughs> that a lot of people don't want to talk about? Because, again, people make it seem like all you got to do is buy a truck, get some insurance, you're good to go. You're going to make a whole bunch of money. And that's two of the, that's two of the, the worst things right now. Like, people get it twisted. Like, they think that you got to go out. When you say buy a truck, you got to go out and buy a $100,000 truck. That's not true. You know, our trucks, you know, are $50,000 trucks that's going to do the same thing that that $100,000 truck do. You know, and you got to kind of understand when you jump out there, you got to have clientele. You got to have stuff to do. That truck got to move in order to make money. You know, when we first got out there, you know, we didn't have the the – the sources to, to, to actually make money, you know, it was like listening to hearsay. You have a homeboy to say, well, I'm making this much money. I'm making that much money. And then you jump out there and then it's like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not doing none of that. I don't see it, you know? And uh, those are the ups and downs that I would say. Like, I would tell people to, to, to do your own homework. Get out there and market yourself. You're going to hear know a lot. You know, go to, you know, try to meet brokers. Go out and try to meet, you know, direct shippers. You know, we still trying to find our way. You know, I mean, so, it's not. I we got Jamal that's... tuning in. We got Jamal coming in. And I got, I got some questions for you already, right? You bought your truck. You're, on, you're insured. Now, Jamal, what's going on? Good evening. What's up? Good what's night. up, Jamal? Bobby? What's popping, baby? What's going I on, baby? Rolling, I hear rolling, man. I hear rolling you... right now. <laughs> <laughs> got to get it. <laughs> for a lot of you that just to reset the room a little bit, a lot of you need to understand this is the trucking industry. A lot of you have been wanting to know a lot about this trucking industry. These guys are making great wealth. We're talking six figures, seven figures worth of income here, and they are feeding their family through this wealth. They're going to give you a lot of good gems tonight, the good and the ugly, so you guys can understand where you need to stand. Now, a moment ago, we were just talking about a used truck. Now, this is a question I get a lot, in, even though I'm not in the industry. What what makes more sense, buying a new truck for $100,000? It's fully, it's, it's fully new. You're not going to get any maintenance issues for now, or is it better to buy a used truck and why? I'm going to let Jamal start off and answer that, and then I'll, I'll piggyback off of him. I mean, the thing with buying a new truck, you got to have the contracts for a new, a new truck. I mean, if you jump out here just saying, I, I'm going to go buy this $100,000 truck, or $150,000 truck, now you buy it, and you're running off the low for it, you're not going to be able to sustain And what I'm saying is, like, the payments, you probably pay about thirty six. Thirty-six hundred a month for the truck, and you got the fuel, and <laughs> you probably have a driver, cause everybody don't want to get out here and do what I'm doing right now. Is behind the wheel. And, and, and let's just to be correct, not to cut you off. The most valuable component in the trucking industry is the driver. Am it's I correct? Is the driver. You got to have a good driver. Got to. And I recommend anybody. That get a truck, that have your truck driver license. Yes, that's very important. true. Yes, to have your license because when that driver don't want to go, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. Oh, oh, oh. Now, while you're talking about getting, being ready, you guys go through different seasons when it comes to weather. How do you guys deal with the whole winter season? Some drivers say they don't want to drive during winter, and I've heard that there's times where you have to put chains on your tires. How does climate affect? uh pallets or seasons or lows or do you guys even do winter season is that something you skip over is it beneficial when it comes to different weather seasons bobby i'm at the money i do everything i tell you this you got to you got to pay attention to the weather if you don't want to drive it it's snow yeah you do stay in the south stay in the snow the south when the snow hit and and run the south now, you guys have different components when it comes to this business. There's buying a truck, being an operator. There's also you guys have to, of course, connect or broker with what we call a dispatcher. Mm -hmm. How valuable is a dispatcher in this business? Like, it, it's it's important if you're running, if you're if you're an owner operator, because that's what we're doing right now. We don't we don't run up underneath our own authority at the moment, and actually we're getting ready to start by doing that here next month man shout out to uh lej logistics man uh jock thomas over in jacksonville florida who just became a freight broker and if anybody knows man we need more of us in there 
as freight brokers because it's already hard enough. You know, we get blackballed on loads, you know, because of who we are. That's that's actually true. You know, when you got other people that's that looks like you that's you know can help you get loads, definitely, man. So shout out to the J Logistics, man. We're about to partner back with him, but it's important when you're on an operator because you want your dispatcher to know how you like to run. You know, and that, and that goes back to what you were saying as far as when it's cold, you know, different seasons, you know, if they know the driver, they know how you like to run. They know what parts of the region you want to run. So they're going to keep your, uh, your truck rolling, you know. Now, is every load worth picking up? Hell oh. no. <laughs> and I and, and I think Jamal will say definitely hell no. <laughs> yeah, and no. why is that? Why is every load not worth it? I mean, because you hear people talk about Amazon, you hear people talk about you know going through dispatchers, brokers. How, what what makes a load worth it compared to another load? Is it distance? Is it fuel cost? Is it the price of the load? Is it you know is it refrigeration uh, component that you need to have? Like what what makes a load worth it? It, it that that all plays into a load. The thing about a load is, mm -hmm. am I gonna make money? Am I gonna put at the end of the load? Will I put money in my pocket? in a decent amount of money because you run these trucks okay for instance um we picked up a load and we was like just to get out of florida we picked the load up we run to georgia they knock a hole in the trailer load then pay but 650 clear with 640 dollars it wasn't worth it <laughs> so i told i told him coming out of florida it's the hardest in truck in trucking, but I tell them I say um we're not taking nothing if it's not paying a thousand to twelve hundred dollars we ain't taking with their head out. With their everybody head. be like oh no I get I get my fuel I get my fuel see it's the principle if you keep taking cheap loads they're gonna keep getting you cheap loads uh -huh. makes never a lot get, of sense never get never get pegged as a cheap truck when you run it because let me, let me, I. I've been in it 20 years, and it was a broker um, I knew. He was like, when, when I need a cheap truck, I call this certain area. Um, one of my <laughs> friends told me that. <laughs> Listen to that key word, Bobby, broker. You, what, what we just talked about, broker. I, I call never get paid as a cheap truck. Always wondering, right now, with how fuel is, you at least want to be making $45 a mile. And if that take that if that if that's taking see right now I'm doing five hundred miles for each load and getting paid two thousand hmm. dollars. Let me ask this question. Now you guys are picking up loads. Now I, I know there's a difference between refrigeration uh trucking and normalized trucking, uh, uh that doesn't have refrigeration. How much of a difference is it if you have hypothetically refrigeration? You're picking up produce, you're picking up product that needs to be refrigerated. How much more money are you making roughly per week compared to how much money you're making on a regular load? So I can hear the difference. I always hear people say about, talk about refrigeration loads. I guess you have a freezer load. How much of a difference are you really making between the two types of trucking? It can be between six to $800 a, a load, just depending. And that depends on wow. the miles as well. But refrigeration is definitely... You know, you're going to always make more money pulling refrigerator than you are pulling dry vans. Always. Yeah. How much is that back-end component? How much is it costing now due to inflation? How much is that back-end component costing for a refrigeration? Well, right now, man, the broker still ain't caught up with what's going on with the fuel, so it varies. You know, and that's, wow. that's, that's one of the things. You can't be consistent right now because you don't know. You know, you go, you go from six months ago, fuel, diesel was like, what, three? 318, 319, and now it's over $5 a, 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 a gallon, bro. You know, it's like we go from filling up our truck and it took eight to $900 now to where it's taking $2,000 to fill up 200 gallon tanks, you know? So it's, it's it really, it really makes sense what you guys are saying because the truck, the, the load has to be worth it because if your fuel cost is so high and the pallet is not worth your time and you're driving so many miles, you're going to get hurt. So, is it true to believe that at the end of the day, if a person is starting based on what you're saying, get a used truck that's affordable. Now, does it make a difference when you say used truck, does it make a difference that to the brand of the truck having 
multiple locations to make it the truck? Because you say the truck is eventually going to break down no matter what. All of them. So All it's good to know how many locations does that truck have uh, when it comes to maintenance in that type of truck across the states. You want to answer that, Jamal? No, you go ahead. Well, how we do it, Bobby, is, you know, we, we have a couple trucks. We have a... Uh, Not the man in the building. And it, do, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, what type of truck it is. You just want something that's efficient and that, that has warranties. You know, you want something that, you know, um, we have a 2015 mic. And uh, what's the other one? We, we got a freight line. What year is it, Jamal? 2015. 2015. We've had them all. And like you say, you want something that's just efficient and that's going to get the job done. I think at, uh, we changed the oil at what? Every what, Jamal? What's the mileage? We, we do every 20,000. Every 20,000 20 to 22,000 okay. miles, we, we, we change the oil. And that's the thing. You've got to take care of your truck. you got to take care of your truck. How much is the oil change roughly on these trucks? What's that? How much is the oil change on these uh, commercial trucks? A PM, man. <laughs> a PM can be like three to four hundred dollars, man. Just depending yeah. on where you go at. Yeah. Wow. Three to three, three to four hundred dollars, man. Yes. Um, the key thing what? about picking a truck, I would recommend anybody take a mechanic with you. For sure. For sure. What? What? Let me let me ask this question. You got your truck. You're insured. What's the next step for a person? I'm, I'm licensed as a CDL driver. I got my truck. Um, I'm insured. What's the next step to my journey of should I be learning how to make, how, should I be putting myself in a position to, to learning how to pick up loads myself or should I eventually immediately go get a, new, a driver? Cause I don't want to take that. I don't want to get into that lane. You should be doing that before you even start. You should be looking at ways to make money before you go and buy a truck because you want to have a way to pay for the truck and a, a way to make money before you actually go and take on that type of debt. You know, I mean, sure. and a truck and insurance, man, you know, commercial insurance for a truck, man, is like a thousand dollars a month. You know, if you're running your own authority, you know, now if you're at least on to somebody, you know, your insurance can be somewhere between three to four hundred dollars a month. But if you're if you're running your own authority, man, we're talking about a thousand dollars a month for insurance. So no, no, and then we're talking about, like I, I think, said, maybe I about fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars a month for. I'm sorry. What's that, Jamal? I think his connection probably uh, oh. probably where he's at. And then like 1800 ask. 1800 a month, you know, for, for, for a truck note. So, you know, you got to be ready to come out the gate. And like I said, that goes back to marketing yourself. You know, get out here and, and try to get accounts. I think Jamal's trying to say something. Let me see if his connection is good. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, go yeah ahead. we good now. Go ahead. Oh, I say I was, I was um about the insurance i say the insurance went up it's like two thousand dollars in, in beginner in beginning trucking company you were at around 2400 they asked for like by eight grand down so 2400 a month if you yeah. buy a used truck you could say roughly your truck could be fifteen hundred dollars so you're looking at four thousand dollars roughly a month that that's your break even point before you make one dollar of profit at a certain point based on the type of truck you buy Yes. So you really have, so it's, to me, it looks like it's very imperative for a person to have a mentor before they just jump into this business. Exactly. And, and I needed you before I first got started. Cause like I said, um, the first time I had my, my first business, when I got out here, man, I, I lost, Jamal can tell you, man, I lost close to 80 grand in like six months and went under, you know, wow. and that was, you know, and that goes like thousand dollar loss. And I'm talking about loss, bro. I mean, I was in the hole, man, for like five years. Like, literally, just came from out of the hole. Maybe about Kevin was popping. Maybe about two years ago, you know. And like I say, we telling you the truth. I ain't finna get on here and just tell you the good stuff, man. Like, you know, I was down. I messed my credit up. I messed my wife' credit up. You know, I mean, behind these trucks, you know. And you know, a lot of people try to go cheap. You know, don't don't go to the hole in the wall to go and get your truck fixed. The guy that's, you know, the the mechanic to where when you go take it to the shop and break down, <laughs> you can't go by, you know what I'm saying, and go and take it to get it fixed well, again. It take, take your truck to the shop, man, the way you can get, you know, some guarantee to where if wrong. it go wrong, you can take it back there, man. Like, those are the stupidest things that I did when I first got out there, man, and I went under quick, man. And, um, you know, like I tell people, if I, if, I can, if I can keep you from making the same mistake that I did when I first started, man, hey, I'm here to let, let you me, know. Let me ask a question. How... 
how how much is a trucker really making roughly? Because people are just talking about it as it's just so lucrative. How much can a trucker make per month refrigeration? Having a re- refrigeration end in in cap um, or back end, I don't know what it's ter- what the terminology is. How how much can you make per uh, month as a, a realist a realistic number for a reefer is around fourteen grand. That's running like consistent with the law. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. You're and what do you mean by when you say the law? He means like with your law books. Not to cut you off, sorry, Jamal. Yeah, you fine. Wow. So uh, a person could roughly make close to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year driving trucks. Yes. So if you offset that by having a secondary truck, you're close to about three sixty a year. Yeah, you kind of know that, Bobby, a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 but, but, but in all that, impressive. In, in all but that's of a lot that, of dedication. Bobby, you, but that's 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 your that's your gross. I, I, that 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 that'll be that'll be your net pay. Your net pay probably will be a little less than than that fourteen because you got fuel coming out. You got um For sure. You got maintenance coming out. So that hundred and eighty can also drop down to just eighty. You and, may and, put a hundred thousand back into the truck. And not to mm, cut Jamal off. Mm, and, because and, and to truck. piggyback to piggyback on what Jamal say, see, and a lot of people, Bobby, are not disciplined. A lot of people hear fourteen thousand. That whole fourteen thousand is not true. You gotta be disciplined to pay the truck. You know, it's some weeks, man, the way you have to, you know, not pay yourself. If you're saying you're going to pay yourself, let's say, 20% or 30% that week, if you got maintenance costs, you may have to take a, you know, a step bike that week not to pay yourself to make sure that wow. you put toward the truck. And a lot of people don't do that, and that's how you get in trouble. You know, a lot of people see 14000 they just go off. You know, I'm, I'm going to go do whatever. But you got to pay your truck. You got to pay your expenses. And a lot of people can't be disciplined like that, man. All right, let me give you an example. Um, go ahead. Made fifty nine thousand with, with with another truck because it stayed broke down, stayed broke down the whole month. It ran by six months, <laughs> made by fifty nine thousand. When I tally up the, the the fuel and the expenses, it came up to seventy three thousand. So I what? lost. Yeah, I lost with that truck that year. Mm, easy, see, that's, easy, Bobby. That, that's that's what people's not gonna tell you. That's not what they're gonna tell you about trucking. So, because it's true, because on social media they make it seem like you buy a truck, you're going to be a multi-millionaire. But my mind always go back to hold on, buying a truck there has to there's going to be costs. Because I used to have a tow truck company, and having a tow truck company, one thing I learned real quick, you need a dedicated driver. And imagine when my car broke down, I had a, I had an international ninety four, which is for people who don't know what an international is, that simply means a flatbed. Okay, that carries three cars, two cars in the back sometimes, and sometimes one in the one one as on the on the on the hitch. At the end of the day, I'm gonna be honest with you. One 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 maintenance trip of my engine going down, that was like seventy five hundred dollars. Easy. Easy. That's something so when I started seeing people buying these hundred thousand or eighty thousand dollar trucks, I'm like, people, you really have to have a client base because at the end of the day, you got to offset those expenses that's coming in, those fixed expenses that's coming in every single month. Yes. So my, my, my thing for you, how easy is it to find or how difficult it is to find a good dedicated driver? How, how hard is that? Man, it's, it's hard, <laughs> man. Take some wind out of them. It's hard, man. <laughs> it's hard. And like Jamal was saying, man, you know, everybody can't do what he do. Hell, I can't do what he do. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the truth. Like, you know, you got to have somebody that want to get out there and want to get it. You know, Jamal, go. Jamal can be gone, man, for two months at a time. You know, I mean, it don't bother him. And then you got some guys that want to get out there, man, and be gone a week, want to come back home. And, you know, I mean, you like he say, the, them wheels got to turn in order for that truck to make money, bro. That's just what it so, is. How many times per month on average do you guys see your family? I mean, because they say the trucking industry has changed – it has gotten better. Okay, in a twelve year in a twelve month stretch, how many times per month do you roughly see your family? I'm gonna let Jamal answer that. Out here. <laughs> let me hear this. <laughs> let me hear this. I hear Bobby stretch. Man out of a twelve month stretch. I probably see my kids four months out the year. Wow. 
Wow. 80 percent. Wow, 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 wow. 80 percent. He he be gone. Jamal's gone. Like he's gone. So, so the the balance is the sacrifice is you're making good money. You got freedom because again you get to go to every state, but at the same time wow. you're sacrificing family time. Mm -hmm. And this is what social media don't talk about. They just make it the glitz and glamour. Buy a truck and you're gonna be, you're gonna be super happy. But at the end of the day, what, what you guys are telling me. It's not just buying a new truck. It's not just buying a used truck. You got to know the history of the truck. That's you got to right. also understand what type of truck are you getting into. That's you right. got to understand the load. You have to have the proper brokers. Yes. You got to understand what are you essentially doing, and you got to be able to move that truck weekly, daily, yearly. Yes, sir. If you don't or somebody else don't take that seat, that truck is not profitable. Yes, sir. Everything that you just said, bro. Everything that you wow. just said, brother. Couldn't have articulated wow. it any better. Everything that you just wow. said. Those are fights. So to be a truck driver, you have to be dedicated to the lifestyle of trucking, based on what I'm hearing. Like that man is right there. He's dedicated to the lifestyle. That's the only way like, you're going to make money, he's, Bobby. Mm. He's, he's, he's so, been out there way longer than me. I mean. So, <laughs> so when social media is fooling your head up with just buy a truck, throw a driver in it, and you got to just make a whole bunch of that, that that term, a whole bunch of money, it is That's not, not true. true. Not, 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 not true. granted, Bobby, it's just like hitting the lottery. You get some guys that may do that. But for the most part, 90% of us, man, we don't have it like that, bro. You know, you, you don't. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 yeah that's that's yeah. not happening, bro. Like I say, you're not, you're not going to have the work out there like that to do it. And then if you do, you got, like he said, you got to be out there and you got to run to make it, man. You have to. What's some advice you could give people who are tuned in right now, who's going to watch this video? Um, what's some great advice you could give these individuals before we close out of this? This magnificent. Appreciate both of y'all giving such great gems. What's some advice you could give these people who want to get into the trucking industry? Uh, what's some advice you, you would love to, of course, share with them? I would just I, say, um, I would say, you know, when me and Jamal first started doing it, we didn't know, you know, the business side of it until we took our loss. And then when sure. we went into it the second time around, we actually, you know, took our time at, you know, educating ourselves, and we said we wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. Like, right now, we're trying to build up to buy more trucks, and, and that's the goal. That's the beauty of it, man. It's like we're we trying to leave generational wealth, you know, 100%. for our daughters. You know, like we, we, didn't, we didn't have the opportunity, you know, when we came out of high school, you know, our parents, you know, my mother worked at a nursing home for – you know, 30 plus years and threw out her hip and couldn't go bike, you know, to work. And, you know, they was trying to get her to come back after she had surgery. And I just said, no, I mean, there's no way, you know, I want to, you know, you know, do that, man. I, I'd rather, you know, work on my own and, and try to build my, my wealth on my own with my own business and roll the dice like that, man. But, you know, I do it for my kids. I think Jamal do too. I ain't going to speak for him. I'll let him tell you that. Jamal, right? give, give me some gems to close out. Give me some gems. My What's thing is, you you give some people what the, you do. The this tips month? I could give a person is I'm not trying to discourage anyone, but the thing about trucking, learn it, learn it, and be dedicated to it, and get your own license because what you what you want to do for yourself, someone ain't going to do for you. See, I hundred percent facts. You, you hundred percent. I I didn't want to get in the truck. I learned that truck. I didn't want to get in the <laughs> truck, but. The driver, he couldn't do it, so I had to get in it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't meet the, the way where we wanted him to meet. Well, we said, we want you to do 10 grand or, um, a week. He couldn't do it. So here go me. You know, see, I love what these fellas just gave us tonight because a lot of us, the reason I wanted to do this live because in the social media world, all we're hearing about is just jump in the truck industry. Nobody's giving gems on understanding different components of the trucking industry, the pros and the cons. Yes, guys, there's a lot of different ways of life to make money. And I love how Jamal said this. I'm not, he's not trying to discourage you, but just he wants you to think for a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Devin wants you to think for a moment. Think mm -hmm. through before you invest your hardworking dollars. One is they said, get your CDL. Because, again, it's your baby. You need to make sure you understand how to control your baby. Because you could imagine your truck is in a different state, and the driver says, I'm not moving that load. 
you need to move that load. Mm -hmm. And imagine you don't even know how to start the engine of your goddamn truck. That's a problem. And okay? Bobby, and, and, and another mo <laughs> another important thing, Bobby, get you a great CPA. Corey Barraswell, what's up? <laughs> get you a great CPA. <laughs> Salute Tice law, Brothers. Man. Tice hey, Brothers, look. what it do? <laughs> hey, we in the building, man. The Let me tell you, <laughs> People, at the end of the day, it was a blessing to have these brothers on tonight. Shout out to Devin and Jamal. Give us some great gems on the trucking industry, the pros and the cons, things to think about used or new. You know, what type of back entry you have, refrigeration, insurance, how costly it can be. Understanding what, of course, loads make more sense. Is every load valuable? Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not. Understanding yeah. the maintenance history of your truck before you even purchase it. Mm -hmm. Is there yeah. anything you guys want to share? Uh, also, what you got? Bobby, it was a, it, when we first brought the mic, I'm in now. It was down for a whole month. Mm hmm and That's a double, fresh out, yeah. Fresh out, the, um, fresh out the dealership, down for a whole month. That is and and I, like, I like what King and Brown just said. Andy Brown just said, yes. That's that's what I was just saying about the Jay Logistics. He just became a broker. That's where the money got on the broker side, too. That's Spikes. That's Spikes, big dog. Fight. So there's broke, there's broker money, there's driver money. That's where the real money, money at. That's where the real money at. Definitely. Huh. So essentially, what the broker is doing is just connecting two people, right, driver right. to driver to load. Correct. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Driver mm -hmm. to load and making the arbitrage, the money in the middle. That's mm -hmm. it. The, the middle man. The middle man sit, exactly. sitting back on his computer, just all day, to. all day. <laughs> <laughs> Give me, give me, Bobby. <laughs> give me. Hey, let me say this: Does anybody have any questions for these individuals here tonight who are talking about the transportation Appreciate industry, you, the kid. trillion dollar tr industry? People, these individuals are truck drivers. They're in the industry, ten toes down every single day. They're here to tell you the pros and cons. Make sure you guys watch this live, share this live. It's your boy Bobby from MentorMe.com. Appreciate you, Devin. Appreciate you, Jamal. Appreciate the brother that says he's been in the broker industry for 12 years. Do you guys have any courses or if anybody have questions? Are you guys comfortable with telling, sharing your social media so people oh, can definitely. maybe ask you guys questions or maybe they want to book a session? Definitely. Um, you can find me on Facebook uh, at Devin Lloyd. That's D-E-V-I-N-L-O-Y-D. You can also find me on Instagram at, uh, at you Talk Sports Show. That's you, sure the letter that, U. Man. Talk T A L K Sports S P O R T S Show S H O W. You talk sports show, and my uh, email address is Red Devil Transport LLC at Gmail dot com. That's the letter Red Devil Transport LLC at Gmail dot com. Red Devil Transport and Hassan Trucking One LLC. Talk to him, Jamal. Hey. Jamal, talk to him. How can they get a hold of you? You can get a hold of me at Jamal Davis on Facebook. That's, That's it. it. People, at the end of the day, appreciate the love. Devin and Jamal from Atlanta, Georgia. People, I want you guys to understand they're in the trucking industry every day, seven days a week. Of course, making money, feeding their families. But they also gave some great gems tonight to have you guys understand. It's not about just buying a truck and just thinking that you're just going to make money. It's about understanding the ins and outs about the trucking industry before it becomes a lucrative industry. Shout out to these brothers giving us some time tonight. Appreciate all of you brothers. Appreciate the love tonight. May God bless. Thank you for all the great gems. I want you guys to enjoy your evening. MentorMe.com. Mentor me. Mentor me. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, Bobby. All love, Jamal. All right. All right.